Hi, and welcome back to The Restoration. On this thrilling episode, we're gonna do all sorts of things from making bushings to painting the frame. But first, I have to tell you, a big woolly sheep came up to me and asked me where could he get his hair cut. So I told him, the bob ba shop. Ha ha ha, good one, Dad. Ha <laughs> ha, I love animal jokes, Jayster. Well, here are the two bushings that I had to press out of that axle there. And you can see the third one here, it's pretty bad for me uh, having to saw that off of there. But I'm going to have to make all of these bushings on the lathe. Well, there are the old two bushings and the new uh, bushings that I made. And I have to admit, guys, I'm really proud of making these. The, if you want to see me make those, it, it'll be in my uh, Journey to Journeyman 4 video. And right now, those are the two to get pressed in. And this is the bar stock that I'm going to use to make the, uh, the third bushing that has to go on there. So I lubricated up this bushing and uh, used my 12 ton press to press it in there. And there's one that goes on this side of the axle and one that goes on the other side. So I got those two pressed in. Now I have to admit this bevel gearbox really has me pretty intimidated, but I decided I'm going to go ahead and try to tackle it. So first thing I want to do is get the rust off. So I stuck it in the uh, sandblaster and de-rusted the whole thing. I realized while I was doing this that the sand needs to be at a certain level and the pickup tube also at a certain level and it blasts way better. In the meantime, there's a lot of hardware that needs to be cleaned up and de-rusted and polished. So here are the parts going into vibratory tumbler. And here's some that just came out. And you can see that really, that vibratory tumbler really cleans them up nicely. So even though I'm very intimidated with this bevel gearbox, I decided to go ahead and open her up and, and tackle the inside. And you can see the tape on spots I didn't want the sand hitting. And that part was very difficult to get off. It's just a good seal on it. So the bevel gear box is apart, but the weather's so nice that I decided I'm, I'm going to need to get some painting done. So I go out there and grab the frame. You can see the paintbrush falling apart with that uh, phosphoric acid. But I grabbed the frame, re-knocked off some of the surface rust because I must have missed some spot with the phosphoric acid, and decided to get everything ready and prep for painting. So once again, I hit some, hit them with phosphoric acid, hit it with the sandblaster, and uh, got everything nice and fresh again for the paint. And here with the new um, sandblaster, it was able to fit the whole front end. I thought I was going to have to do that with the outdoor sandblaster, but I was able to get it into the blast cabinet and get parts I couldn't reach before. And uh, also, the axle needed a lot of cleaning on it. Now, this part, if you remember, I had to use um, the saw to cut it to get certain parts off. So it's not a structural part, and it didn't go all the way through, so I just do a little JB weld in it, and it will be painted up, and you shouldn't be able to even tell it's there. Well, this is the part we all like, the primer and paint. But don't be tempted to do shortcuts. Go ahead and do your prep like you're supposed to. I'm using my Harbor Freight self-contained turbine sprayer on this, and it still is working like a champ. And yes, Harbor Freight, you need to be paying me. Here you can see just how atomized and how nice of a fan that... Uh, painter does it, it's just it does a great job for such a cheap um, Harbor Freight painter now the drawback with this type of painter is 
that when you paint up or down, the straw you can put up or down. And uh, if you don't have it pretty full, then there's a possibility that you're, you're starving the tip and we'll have to either point it up or down, get the paint back up there. And now I realize that I can't see what I'm painting, so I move out of the way. And uh, here in the wheels, um, you see that it really does. It, it comes out in a nice, beautiful fan, a nice mist. It's atomized uh, beautifully. But once again, the only drawback is when you're painting up or down, and if, if your your can's not full, that the way you beat that is just have a full can of uh, paint. And it works like a champ. Now you NASCAR blacked out wheel fans, forget about it. That's just the epoxy primer. And there's the epoxy primer on there. It really did a good job. But on the wheels, they're not going to be blacked out like that. That's just a primer, and I'm going to throw the white paint on there. And here are the pieces here that um, I decided I'm going to paint as many pieces as I could that day. And this is just the epoxy primer. And now we're going to put some paint on there. And now I switch over to my cheap Harbor Freight uh, HVLP, and this is the gravity fed gun. And it, once again, keeping the pressure low, it, it does a great job as well. And you can see it really got windy out there, so I'm, you know, trying to spray between the gust, and I'm outside there, and so it blows dust in your, your paint, but it didn't do too badly. And right now I'm just doing a light dusting of the, the Alice Chalmers orange, and then I'm going to come back and lay down several good wet coats. Guys, I have to admit, I'm proud of myself again. Even with the bad conditions, the paint job turned out really, really nice. Since it's such a beautiful day, my family is out there. There's my oldest son there. And... Uh, once again, it looks like that factory e-coating on these things. It really turned out well. Girls, girls, be quiet. It's time for Tractor Chat. Hi, and welcome back to Tractor Chat, the only Emmy Award winning tractor talk show. For those of you who are just tuning in, you've missed an outstanding show. Jennifer Lopez was here. Jennifer. Thank you for stopping in and showing us how to tune those fuel injectors on a top alcohol lawn tractor. Once again, folks, I need to apologize to my sponsor, Matco Tools. It seems now it was just a misunderstanding. This winter, when they asked me to go to the Olympics, it was as a loser, a loser. Oh, breaking news. This is coming to us live from our third grade news correspondent, too darn smooth. Too darn is live on the third grade playground. His report is, boys go to college to get more knowledge, whereas girls go to Jupiter to get more stupider. Folks, I don't write the news, I just report it. Wait a minute. My producers are saying that it's ratings week and they need a grown man to cry on TV. That's the only way to get ratings, so, I'm going to have to cry for you. So here we go. <clears throat> boo. Wah, wah, boo. Okay, that seems to be enough. So that's all the time we have today on Tractor Chat. Tune in next week. Same tractor time, same tractor channel.
And that's all we have today on Tractor Time. So, no. Oh.